So would you please welcome to the microphone the Honourable Jeremy Buckingham. Thank you very much, Alan. Uh, thank you all for coming out and uh, taking the time and making the effort to inform yourselves about coal seam gas. Uh, I'm Jeremy Buckingham. I was elected to the New South Wales Upper House on March the 26th for the Greens. And uh, since that time, coal seam gas uh, and the issues around uh, uh, property rights and what's happening to our farmlands and our communities, coal seam gas and coal mining has consumed my life. And rightly so, because I think any politician worth their salt cannot ignore this issue and has to uh, inform themselves of what's happening. So the first thing I did in Parliament was um, lobby the government successfully to initiate a coal seam gas inquiry, an upper house inquiry, specifically focusing on coal seam gas. And we've had a thousand submissions. I'm sure people here have made submissions. Um, and. Uh, Overwhelmingly, those submissions was, were saying that people were saying no to coal seam gas. They were saying we didn't understand it, the science hadn't been done, there's too much at risk. And as part of that, uh, uh, that inquiry, we've travelled the state to hearings from, uh, well, we're going to have a, a hearing here in Bowral, but we've been to Bogabri, we've been to Byron Bay, we've been across the state. And I just wanted to share one of the uh, stories that um, I heard at the inquiry in Narrabri uh, just on Wednesday this week. And there was a farmer there, um, and he says, I can use his name, uh, Tim Duffy, not Tim Duddy, another one, uh, Tim Duffy. And he said uh, that coal seam gas was destroying his life. And, and I, I'll, I'll explain, that, that's a big call, but it, like for me, and once I'd heard his story, it was true. Santos came in, they, they signed an access agreement with, a, with a, a neighbour. They came in and Tim Duffy didn't complain. He said, well, they, they, they've made all these commitments. They said they'll do this, they'll sell, they said they'd do that, and he thought he'd be a good citizen, and he didn't complain. They came in and they established four pilot production wells on the property adjacent to him. Then he started to begin to inform himself. He, he became increasingly concerned about what was going to happen to the aquifer what was going to happen to his community, when, it, when and if this community grew. So he thought, I'll get out. I'll get out. Uh, I've been farming for 25 years. I've been growing food, growing cattle for 25 years. But I'll get out and I'll move to town before this industry grows. He had his property valued, and he made this submission to the Upper House Inquiry a couple of years ago at $1.5 million. He tried to sell his property in October. He couldn't get a bid at 800000 and now he is a reluctant coal seam gas activist. And I think they are the uh, most powerful activists in this, is people that are dragged to it. He didn't do this for a career, he got dragged into this because this industry has massive plans for his community and are going to change his life. And so uh, this industry, this industry, don't kid yourselves, from what I've gathered, will be the largest industrialisation New South Wales has ever seen. Tens of thousands of wells, spider webbing out across the landscape, compressor stations, work camps, pipelines, trucks, turning our key agricultural lands into a massive gas field. Uh, another submission we had was from Norco, and Norco are a fantastic dairy cooperative. And that cooperative, a business, three or four hundred million dollars a year turnover, um, a, a couple hundred dairies, uh, the smart dairies that have survived the rationalisations, have survived the atrocious prices they receive from uh, the supermarkets, but that's another story. That, that cooperative employing thousands of people in dairies all across the North Coast, in their submission they said to a word, if you, we cannot coexist with coal seam gas. The choice for the politicians is coal seam gas or dairying. An industry worth $400 million exporting to the world, feeding us daily. The choice is us or coal seam gas. And for mine, uh, I'll choose the farmers every day. So what we've been doing is um, pressuring the government 
and I've got to acknowledge the government has made uh, some good moves with their strategic regional land use uh, plans, but those plans are going to have to deliver. And so until such time as those plans have delivered, until such time as the, the science has been established, I think we need a moratorium. So I've introduced a coal seam gas moratorium bill into the state parliament. I've been pressuring uh, my political uh, uh, colleagues. The Labor Party have moved belatedly to support it. And I hope that the, uh, the, the O'Farrell government does the right thing and supports the bill when it's voted on, uh, potentially even on uh, Thursday or Friday next week. So that's what I want to happen. I want a moratorium. The Greens are not against all mining. That's something I'd like to say. We just believe it has to be responsible. And this industry, coal seam gas, is irresponsible. They've got no plan for how they're going to deal with the billions of litres of water. They call it adaptive management. It's make it up as you go along. And so until such times as they come clear, and, and, and they can establish what impact they're going to have, as, as Bill has said, how they're going to make good, and I don't think they can. Until such time, there should be a moratorium on this industry in the state. Thank you.